Lucia van der Post is perhaps best known as the founding editor of the FT How to Spend It magazine. She has also written extensively about travel and lifestyle for many publications. Lucia, welcome. Good to see you. Very good to be here. Can you please tell me, you've been writing about luxury for probably three decades. How would you say it's evolved through the years? Oh, enormously. And I think it poses huge problems for the luxury goods industry. I mean, when I first started, people aimed to have a fancy handbag with a fancy label. You know, they wanted to say, this is by Chanel. Or, and in those days, Hermes was just a very little unknown brand. It wasn't the brand it is now. But they wanted people to know that they had a big name label. Whereas today, silk and scarves and cashmere and um, furs and fine scents are all... They're still loved, but they're much less in demand. What people really want to spend their money on is um, wellness, travel, learning, growing, doing things, having experiences with their families. And so you would say that luxury means something different to everyone? Oh, absolutely. I remember years ago writing a piece one Christmas about luxury, and I quoted an American Express survey who'd asked a whole lot of top industry um, people what they wanted for Christmas. Not one wanted an object. I mean, well, uh, Terence Conran, actually, Terence Conran said his idea of luxury was river-washed linen sheets. Yes, he did want something, and nobody except Terence with his river-washed linen sheets wanted an object. Everybody wanted something intangible. Thinking about how luxury brands are evolving, do you think they're trying too hard to please people now and trying to be doing too much? Well, I think they're pretty smart, the people who run them, and they have wakened up to the fact that there is an incredible paradox about luxury. You can't expand it in a, uh, indefinitely, otherwise it ceases by definition to be luxury. And so they, they've invented all sorts of special things, like having special rooms at the top of the LVMH maison, as it's called. It's not a mere shop, it's a maison. And at the top of the maison, they will have special little soirees for their best clients so that they just get special limited edition pieces that nobody else can get. And I guess now there's very much all about the brand story, isn't it? And just making sure that they've, they're marketing, you know, that experience, would you say? Like brand I think story? a brand story is incredibly important. And I think they've realised that um, too much, much more. I mean, people like Hermes and LVMH, for instance, they regularly open up their ateliers uh, once a year, I think, particularly LVMH, you can go to the great wineries down in Bordeaux. You can go to the Louis Vuitton headquarters in Asnier and see how things made. They realise that the backstory, what they call authenticity, is incredibly important. And new brands that are starting, it's very interesting to notice, they always have a backstory. You know, my mama made this and I now am, you know, searching out organic cotton and, you know, there's always a story. To People want more than just an object. Yeah, I guess it's sort of more about the, the, the heritage, the people behind the brand. People want that insight, don't they, really, into that brand rather than yeah, just the why product. that brand rather than another? One thing that you have done a lot is written extensively, haven't you, about travel. So could you just tell us something about maybe your most memorable experience? Well, it's really weird because writing about travel for how to spend it, we are really addressing, you know, the world's most privileged people. And, but when I look back at my most memorable travel experiences, I can tell you exactly what they are. And they're not luxury. I mean, you know, people have fancy bathrooms and nice warm homes and nice food at home. They don't need to travel for that. What they need to travel is, for is something special. And my three most amazing experiences, one was walking for five days with camels up in, in Dutu Mountains in northern Kenya, where we slept in little tents at night and walked with the Samburu singing through the hills and the camels by day. It was magic. Another one was canoeing down the Zambezi, which I would not recommend now. The <laughs> hippos and the crocs have got irritated and wise to man, but when I did it, it was very new, and we slept out, not even in tents, on little camp beds. And my third one was um, just about a year ago, I went to Chad, to one of the poorest countries in the whole world, to the Anesti Mountains to look at the rock art. There's no tourist infrastructure. The food was terrible. We had little, tiny little man, one-man tents. And yet 
I went with a great woman friend of mine, and she and I agreed it's one of the most memorable things we ever did. So, you know, what you need to give people is something, a memorable experience, not just a fancy hotel room and a swimming pool and a yes. five-star restaurant. Well, thank you so much, Lucia. Um, we're really pleased that you could come and join us, and, um, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Not at all. <laughs>